Hey everyone, this is John Sarantino, the designer and host of WellFed. By now you've probably heard the recent news of the coronavirus. I hope you, your friends, and family are all safe and healthy. I wasn't planning on doing this series, but I'm sure, just like me, you're also trying to adjust to this. Before the weekend, I spoke with a few friends of the podcast to see how this is affecting them and what they are doing to adapt. I hope you enjoy this series I'm calling Create From Home. Jonathan Key, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, as we know, times are hectic and things are definitely changing, and I appreciate you taking the time out of you know your busy schedule already to ch- chat with me about how you're dealing with uh, the isolation, you know, socially distancing, responsibly distancing from from everyone. Um, so let's just start right away. Um, what has changed in your daily routine? You've already kind of been sort of independently freelancing and working for yourself. Um, has anything really changed for you and, and how you go about your day? <coughs> As I start with the cough. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean, we, I run Workless Key. I co-run Workless Key with Wild Workos. And for, you know, the past couple of years, we've been working out of our apartment. Um, We have like a studio space in our apartment. So in terms of like staying home and working, (laughs) that basically is staying the same. We're actually literally just signed a lease to move into a real studio space that's separate from our home, but it's kind of delayed amongst all of the, you know, warnings about staying at home and stuff like that, which is good for us. So we're just kind of taking it easy, but still working, still doing our same routine. Um, so things are good for us. How, like, how do you start your day? Is it any different? You know, are you like cooking more or anything like that? Are you doing your stretches or going out for a walk? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm definitely trying to, uh, you know, I mean, we have most of our clients are still working, you know, so we haven't really lost any work and we, some brand new projects are slightly delayed, but we really haven't started them anyway. So we're still kind of doing this amount of work, uh, but definitely taking it easier on ourselves, just being healthy, maybe sleeping in a little bit more, just so our bodies relax and like rest up because me and what oh, both are getting over like sinusy things. Um, but yeah, definitely cooking more. Like we're cooking a ton, which is fun for us. Like we love cooking. And it's nice, you know, now that we have a grocery, like a uh, a refrigerator full of groceries. So, you know, it's a good, it's nice. It's like, you know, like self-care at home. Definitely trying to find reasons to go to the roof, take walks, go to, you know, get a bottle of wine. Um, but so it's been nice. It's actually been really nice for us. And I also was just wrapping up Armory, the Armory Art Fair, so, you know, I haven't been at home for the past three months. You know, I've been like kind of in my painting studio working, kind of getting that show ready. So for me, it's really nice just being able to be here, be grounded, be one place, kind of just working and focusing um, on our work. So, yeah, it's yeah, been nice. And that's kind of crazy, too, because like you said, you were just at Armory. I know that a lot of your like your work showed up in a ton of diff- a ton of articles, you know, and press and things like that. So congratulations on that. Thank but you. It's, it's crazy. Like, you're coming back to a very, you know, different situation. You know, how has that like w- mentally? What has that done? Well, first of all, I just feel like we're very lucky that Armory in New York even happened because they were canceling like our Dubai. So many like all of these large, you know, events were are being canceled or canceled or canceled now. Um, so we were like the week before everything got canceled. So I'm just very thankful that we're able to still have the show and all the months of work happened. Um, so that's good. And then for me, I mean, like, you know, I'm kind of sometimes going to the studio, maybe in the late afternoons, like walking there and painting a little bit, but coming back. But it's not a big, you know, I don't have like a big show that I have to like work on, like get done. So that's really good for me. Um, I don't know, like I'm just really enjoying being home, you know, and just like playing. We have a new cat, a new kitten named Cooper. Um, so it's nice being able to be at home and play with him. You know, it's nice. We have like, we have distractions. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's been fun. I know you had mentioned some of the clients or some of the projects that you're working on are still going and then some of them have been delayed. Could you maybe, you know, expand a little bit on that? Like has, what has the reaction been from clients? Um, you know, have some of them just completely pushed projects back till, you know, things clear up or 
are used to label, obviously being designers and being in this industry, we have the freedom and, and the lovely freedom to, to be able to work remote. But you know, what has that, how has that affected you and, and how you kind of operate in, in YL Marcos? Yeah. So, I mean, we're doing a few editorial book projects right now which is like the, the perfect remote project, you know, like the client is over content, you know, we deal with the content, the client, cause we can do it over email. We can hop on calls, you know, it doesn't really require, um, it doesn't really require a lot at all, actually, you know, so that's actually really lucky. So we have like three book projects that we're wrapping up or like trying to get out the door. So that's really good. But then we have, you know, some um, other projects that are like branding projects for, kind of branding projects for events or things that the events have now been postponed, you know. So those type of projects have been delayed uh, or like for projects that require like, you know, people to actually get into the room, actually have meetings or all of that. So those projects have been delayed. But we only had a couple of projects that are brand new that that have been delayed. And I think even our other branding projects that we're working on are still like we're wrapping them up and getting them out the door. Um so, I mean, for us, we've been really super lucky, I think, just having these projects that do just work really well remote. Um, and so we just been continuing. I mean, like, we're also, we always do a lot of calls with our clients. We always do a lot of video calls because we have a lot of international clients anyways. So, I mean, this is very much, you know, like, I feel like we've been kind of working this remote lifestyle forever. Um, which I think a lot of freelancers can identify with and a lot of designers can identify with. Um, who are doing this type of gig. So I think that we're, you know, very much keep it pushing. I have heard tons of friends who projects have gotten canceled or cut or postponed indefinitely. And that's really scary and super terrifying. Um, but what's also amazing is just all the resources that are also being available for freelancers and designers and even small businesses and people really figuring out ways to give money, give donation, give time, give resources. I've even seen resources for like, online teaching, like I teach at Cooper Union, and we're about to like switch to online. So like a lot of just resources for that in terms of how to effectively use Zoom, how to effectively use Google Hangouts. And like, you know, these are, it's kind of, I mean, like this is 2020, this is where we are. And it's just amazing that we also do have the technology to allow work to still happen, you know? So, you know, we're all just kind of rolling with the punches, I think at this point. Totally. I mean, I think it's, it's, I, I totally now recall that you, you know, you're now teaching at Cooper as well, you know, and it's like that, that has also shifted to you having to, um, you know, teach online now before I, before we get into some of that, I think I like, you know, I really wanted to talk to you about some of the resources that have allowed you to, to work responsibly and, and kind of streamline that workflow with clients. Um, and then also you mentioned the resources just in like the New York area have come up out just through this kind of outbreak and this, and this happening, you know, if you could mention maybe some of those as well, that might be helpful. Hmm. Well, definitely. I mean, I'm a very big believer <laughs> of Google, like the Google suite. I think like Google sheets, spreadsheets, Google documents, all of that, I think has made our lives super easy. That's something that we very much believe in. Um, and use a lot. And it's also perfect for things like content or, you know, um, feedback where you can like answer questions in the same document kind of real time, which is really great. Um, obviously, Zoom, Google Hangouts, Skype, all of those things are great resources. You know, like Skype is free, Google Hangouts, Hangouts is free. Um, but in terms of like some specific New York resources, I mean, I... I can't think of them anything on my top of my head. I mean, they're all basically on Instagram. I've just been seeing so many like nonprofits like share things on Instagram. So I've been trying to share those things. So if you're curious, you can follow me on Instagram, jkey 13 I'm just constantly like just resharing the things that I'm finding. They can range from like food to like stipends to supplies to uh, resources for teachers. Um, and I have a, I mean, I have a, just a ton of friends and connections in kind of the nonprofit social justice community anyways. And so I would, could definitely share, you know, resources, you know, offline to again, put out there, um, uh, or on Instagram. No, totally. I mean, I, I've seen a bunch of like, you know, we are lucky to, to be in this kind of like remote, um, being able to work remote, but a lot of people, you know, like today, New York had just announced that only 
not any, anyone who's a non-essential employee, you know, uh, working in hospitals, uh, uh, you know, New York police, things like that are not allowed in New York. And that puts a lot of people out of work. So, you know, definitely support local restaurants, definitely support any places that are delivering or anything like that. Um, Absolutely. There's a lot of those things have popped up. I've seen uh, actually a friend of the show as well. Danny Owens has made something. I think it's like support NYC dot online or something like that. Um but as as you're teaching, have you had a class yet? Um, that's online. Well, actually, so it's been spring break. Like this this week is spring break, and then next week we're doing what they're calling like a study week, which I'm not necessarily sure what that means. No classes are meeting, and the expectation is not for there to be online classes. And then I think the following week is when the online classes start. So I'm actually going to send my students an email today. That just basically recaps, like, you know, what the expectations are for, the, like, wrapping up this one assignment that we're doing and then getting ready for the next assignment that we're doing. And, you know, it's unclear if schools are going to reopen. It's unclear if we're just doing online, you know, learning for a few weeks or just for the rest of the semester. We don't, they, you know, we don't know yet. So, uh, but right now, I think they have, like, a contingency plan for, like, the next three weeks. So, Totally. We'll see. You know, because of this virus outbreak, you know, I think a lot of creatives especially are trying to use the time to better themselves in some way. And I think you and I have the, again, the the blessing to be able to work remote and still have, you know, work coming at us and things like that. Um, you know, for younger creatives and, and freelancers, you know, like, what do you, what would you say to them during this time is like, take advantage, like do this thing so that when we do get to a point where things are starting to recover, you're already ahead of the game. Like, what, what would you say suggest is something that they should do? I mean, absolutely. I mean, we're doing, we're still also doing these things even amongst our work, you know, if they're like, even for my painting, like I'm trying to figure out like a new medium, I'm trying to figure out this new series. I'm taking time to sketch and draw and like think through things, which you know, which is nice that I have that, like, slow time to do that. And I think explore, I would tell people to explore those projects that you've been excited about that maybe you haven't had an opportunity to get started on yet. Like, this is a time to definitely do that work, you know. And I definitely think it's all about, you know, finding things that you love doing, you know. So hopefully this could be an opportunity for people to just make work that they love, you know. And I also don't feel like people have to make work. I mean, I think we are designers and we're always like, you know, we're always like working, 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 working. And I think that's definitely how New Yorkers are. But, you know, read a book, like read about, read about a designer that you love, you know, read about somebody else's process, watch documentaries and learn things about what other people are talking about, you know, like a lot of museums are doing like online exhibitions, a lot of like places are doing online dance classes, like Alvin Ailey. That's one of the resources. Alvin Ailey is doing, like, online dance classes, and, like, a lot of the museums are doing online exhibitions, and even, like, local curators are doing, like, exhibitions digitally online or on their Instagram, so that could just be something exciting as well. I mean, maybe it's an opportunity to research, you know, maybe it's about an opportunity to find new people that you maybe didn't know about. Um, but then also, I mean, like, it could also be an opportunity for a break, you know, and I think that's also okay. I think, you know, we also feel guilty, like, oh, we slept in 30 more minutes. Like, I feel so guilty about that. And like, that's actually okay, you know, sometimes. I feel exactly that. that. I, I feel like I, I'm starting to feel like, you know, there is a little bit of guilt. I'm like, oh, I slept in till 830 today. I got to start working at nine. And I, I like, I haven't put myself into that. Like, uh, like I'm, I'm holding myself to try and be more productive but in a way, to your point, it's like almost it's it's really helpful to hear from, you know, from yourself to just like be OK with that. Like take this time to almost rest, do the work that you have to get done, get through the work, but also take the time to regenerate and, and really like really put self-care 2020 in play. Yeah, because what's going to happen like this, you know, this current state that we're in for like a month is going to go away and then everything's going to wrap up hyperspeed because now everyone feels delayed and back and like, you know, they're late now. So everyone's like, now we need this faster. Now we need this faster. I know that's going to happen. So like, let's just take this little moment of like rest, of chillness, of you know, self-isolation or self-distancing, social distancing, because you know immediately once this is over, like, the world's going to go back and it's going to be, like, you know, hectic again. And like, maybe we can take 
some of these things that we're learning while we're having this like imposed self social distancing that we can bring into our new lives that will happen on the other end of this that maybe like maybe we don't have to work that hard maybe it is okay for us to be alone maybe it is okay for us to take breaks maybe it's and like that's okay you know you know i think so you know i would agree i would agree with that i think that's a i think i'm so glad you said that i think that's a big thing that i struggle with and i think a lot of people can also you know uh, who are listening would also potentially really gratify in that or really find that helpful um, you had mentioned something, you know, like Alvin Ailey and some of the museums are taking to online. I've seen people even go as far as starting to do yoga and fitness classes online. You know, do you think things like that are will be here to stay? Right. Like it kind of makes you think, like, how will this affect moving forward for businesses, for, you know, organizations and arts, cultural organizations as such? You know, do you think those instances of online interaction, you know, even like nightclubs having online raves, do you think that's going to be something that stays for the future or and that they consider it or will it be something that is just temporary? You know, I mean, I hope it stays. I mean, just because it just really does, you know, that's like the good thing about the Internet where you could have like when these become more accessible, these become free even for people to participate and learn in. And, you know, that's kind of the bad part about cap i mean there's a lot of bad parts about capitalism but like the worst part about capitalism is the fact that these resources that can be given to people or can be used for people or can be disseminated in like a very large way um don't just because of money you know and so it is refreshing to me that there is kind of this collective conscious effort to democratize you know access to things that really should be free anyways, you know, like things that are good for your health, things that are good for your mental health, things that are good for your physical health and your well-being, things that make you, you know, like art should be free, you know, why are we, like why are museums already charging 20 people to see art anyways, like that's crazy, but they don't need that money to operate, well some sometimes they do, that's not fair, but sometimes they don't, you know, and it's just really <laughs> about like making sure we keep some people in, some people out, and what is accessible. So I really hope they say, you know, I really hope that maybe, like, there's new technology that is invented out of this, like, new ways that we're rethinking kind of online gatherings that can very much, you know, help us stay connected and keep things accessible. I hope so. Have So, I mean, I, I completely agree. I, I think it's some of the most amazing um, instances or, or things are happening right now where, you know, I'm very, I would like to think I'm not super connected to nightlife, but I do enjoy it. So it's interesting to see how, you know, some of these, um, you know, New York just places are putting things online and, and putting that to the people still for them to enjoy. Um, you know, as we wrap up, I, um, I wanted to ask, you know, have you partaken in any of the, you know, virtual happy hours or are there any <laughs> things that you're doing now to go out and, and connect with, you know, your friends that like, because of this social distancing, we're not able to see face to face. Yeah. I mean, like we're, I've, I've been planning a bunch of FaceTime hangouts and like meetings via FaceTime or like gatherings via FaceTime or, or Skype or Google hangouts. But also, I mean, like, it's also just nice to be able to like have text conversations with people that maybe I wouldn't normally text often, you know, or, you know, like, yeah, I think those things are happening, you know, for me, I guess. <laughs> I just feel like I'm always constantly connected with my friends anyways. So it's pretty chill. I have, I have downloaded recently uh, an app called house party that I think has been, is starting to spread as, as uh, you know, throughout my friends as well. And we're, we're playing more FaceTime games where we're kind of connecting and getting in chat rooms more like that. And it's, it's a very, Again, this is a very serious time, and I know you know that the the outbreak continues to rage on, and I hope everyone is safe. But it is a moment that is somewhat warming still in this time of of craziness that people are still finding ways to connect and and stay connected with the ones closest to them. So, absolutely, I mean, I completely agree with that. I love all these videos, like in Italy of like so the guy playing the trumpet and the whole town singing. Like those things are super beautiful, and I think even. And something that is very sad and very scary at some points or very stressful even. Like, there are obviously moments of hope and resilience and love and support because that's really what we do need, you know, at the end of the day. Like, 
people, you know, people like the human spirit, the human, you know, human beings will get over this, you know, eventually. But how do we, you know, support each other throughout, I think, is always the question. So, yeah, it's interesting. It's fun. Like, it's sad, obviously, the outside world, but it is fun, like, these kind of warm ways that people are connecting. Agreed. Jonathan, I, um, you know, thank you so much for taking the time today. I know, you know, as freelancers, we're constantly staying busy. You know, work doesn't stop because you've already been in this situation for some time now, working independently. But I appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time today. And I hope you stay safe and, and stay healthy. Yeah, same to you. Thank you so much for inviting me. This is so fun. If you're looking for more information about the virus, please visit cdc.gov. If you're looking for someone to talk to you because you're unsure or you have a story you'd like to share, you can always DM me on Instagram at wellfedpodcast. You can also join me on this app I found called House Party. It's a video game app that uses your camera and it's really helped me take my mind off the news and stay connected with people. You can find me on there at John Sore. That's J-O-N-S-O-R-R-E. As always, this podcast is produced by me, John Sorrentino, and my friend Kevin Bendis. Everyone stay safe out there, and we'll see you in the next episode.